And this is when I thought, well, all right, I've just got to start experimenting. You know, so this piece is about walking, and you thought, well, how does walking feel? And I tried to get away from this idea of counting steps. Because, you know, one of the things with, um, with counting in the human mind, numbers, particularly big numbers, are kind of abstract. We, we're absolutely sure when we can see one of something, two of something, three of something, and then it's a bunch. So, you know, they've known this by actually do a lot of testing with little kids that are preschool. They do testing with other cultures that don't have any, um, there's Amazon tribes, there's no concept of numbers beyond five. And so it got me away from this idea of trying to, to make, you know, the actual steps of the Fitbit match. So I started to come up with this idea that it's, that it's more about walking as accumulation. It's the cum cumulative amount that you walk, and what do you see, and the sense of time as you walk. And so I started making pieces with that in mind, and um, cut them with a laser cutter. Because if you lived in these ambient sensing spaces, you don't necessarily want digital projected on the walls, but what could automatically cut for you, right? Laser cutters, they're getting inexpensive, and they have these little 3D, um, uh, MakerBot has these little 3D printers where you can print the little cupcake, you're not exactly. But it's not very far off that you'll order something from Amazon and you don't actually have it shipped to you, you're just going to print it out. It's like a physical little thing. But the idea, so it got me away from the idea that it has to be flat and on the walls. These could be laser cut, they could be 3D printed, and so I started to think about materials that would feel like that. And track my upset stomach. I put my in numbers in this one. And they're based on drawings. So they're, you know, people say they look like you've hand done them. And, um, and I started to grapple with this question, you know, not everything's good. Sometimes things go bad. Sometimes you measure things, whether it's my upset stomach, or I was taking a look at a lot of my web stats on my website, and you think, well, how's, but you know, it's, whatever you're putting out there, your web stats are kind of an external measure of something about what you're doing, and it's like the Russians absconded with it. And so I started thinking, well, all right, some of it's going bad, and I thought, well, how can I come up with a metaphor for when something's not working, and I thought, well, I'll make it fall apart because then I'll be so incented to want to stack it back up, clean it up, make it neat again, put the drawers, you know, the socks in the drawer all in their place. Um, and so when you see things that are starting to fall apart, that's because you're measuring something and it's, it's, it's not good. You know, and it's not like when you're measuring something about yourself, it's not, things not always perfect and happy, and it's not like you want to see it always perfect and happy. I think you want to reflect what's real. So, but you don't want to like, beat you over the head. I think having stuff fall apart is just a subtle way to say, put it back in its place. <laughs> so then I made bunches of them, right? And if somebody sees these are the same little hole in the linoleum pieces on the wall, so I made um, and thought, well, how, you know, I started thinking of this wall, you know, wall size, and um, it was kind of a breakthrough as I got here, you know, at women in their work to have a hanging system and to be able to sort of make a more intense experience as opposed to thinking of it as a wall. You know, how do you think of it as, a, like, in a couple seconds, get the sense of all this data that's surrounding you? How would that feel? And you've got you know, really just a few seconds as somebody walks into an exhibition to give that sort of sense of experience and be able to walk through it. And somehow it has to, you know, I don't think I've explained carefully, but the wall and the color wall is, you know, related to your mood and coloring your mood every day. And the cutouts are related to the patterns and the sense of pattern that you could live with in a space. And so it's just a way to pay off this idea, would it be soothing, how does it feel, you know, what if that data was surrounding you in the spaces that you lived, what would that feel like? And so as, um, as the piece against this wall um, was made with the laminates, I have a little short time lapse so you can kind of get a sense. I worked on it in the fall knowing that the show was coming at an artist's residence. And I've got a little time lapse here that runs just about a minute.
So we're almost to the end, and what I thought I would do is I took some pictures in my studio yesterday, and a lot of you that have been there say, oh yeah, been there, seen that. So I've got a few studio shots. Um, I make most of the work here in Austin, Texas, and uh, this is sort of looking into the studio toward the back. It has skylights and big windows. It's really, this is what you get when you get to build your own studio. It's really great. And uh, you'll see some of the pieces are on the wall. These are pieces that are um, going into a show in Los Angeles that are based on walking. Uh, I did a mood jam wall that's 12 by 12 that's going to go into the gallery and hit the top of the ceiling. So like that. You got all four views. And so I've got just three of the pieces here. So these are based on the accumulation of walking. This is about a three-foot piece, built-in panels, based on the idea of how do you capture the sensibility, the feel. You know, as I've been walking, I've been using my tracks, my Fitbit, my steps. I wear a little cat camera. And you can buy a camera for your cat. <laughs> They're cheap. It's, a little, it's like a little time lapse. You come back, you grab the memory card. I went today on Town Lake Trail. And they, they take horrible pictures. But you do have a sense of that random thing that you saw. It's got a little memory card. And it's the, it's, sometimes it's that colorful person in front of you. Or it's the, you know, the feel of the sky. It's the color. So those colors then make their way into the works based on the topology of walking. And this was uh, from a residency as we were taking hikes in the mountains and walking from place to place on the trails. And so let me just end with, back to my original goal, self-knowledge through numbers. That there's probably something that you keep track of. You might not write it down for a while, but just paying attention to something that you do every day and kind of watching, uh, it's... Um, Insightful, powerful, get to know that other you. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Rachel, did we do questions? Uh, we should do some questions, yeah. All right, before we do the questions, you know, for the, at the opening night, I was just profusely thanked women in their work. They're, there is a ton of people that volunteer for women in their work, and I'm convinced they do it because of the community. You know, Lisa, you're organized in like, I, I, you like, you sweetness and coercion to get people to do everything you want. Um, but Lisa Shinaki and Rachel Coper has an amazing, you know, curatorial program this year. There's six more shows, five more. So there's six, five more shows this year. So uh, with artists that have really different contemporary sensibilities. It's really um, exciting to be part of this here. Chris Cowden uh, has an amazing board of directors and the people that are part of women in their work and many people have been here for years and years and have supported. It's a, it's a place where you, there was no hesitation when I said I have this experiment and I'm doing data and I'm going to plan and I, I, and I it's a, that'll be great. So it's that sense of, you know, there was, there's, it's such a different experience when you deal in a gallery world. You know, it's got to work, it's got to be just right. And here, the opportunity to experiment and to try something completely else and the camaraderie and the sense of community and the, the, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a superb place. They cover all of Texas, not just Austin. It's great. Should I say anything else? You guys are really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so questions. Um, just a few. Is there anything that didn't make sense or you thought was, you want to chat more about? Yes. Well, right now I'm thinking this will really help the blind community with all these sensors. But um, how do you work intuitiveness into this? So Our do you, spirituality. Yes, you know, I that understand. Part right, of a right. The question was well, first was the observation that sensors will help the blind community, but it's a question of, you know, how do you work intuition or, and spirituality or mysterious? Right, right. Um, I'm really quite um, taken by late medieval paintings. 
uh, Duccio and Lorenzetti in the paintings that went into the cathedrals in Siena in the early 14th century, from about the 1330s. And I'd always thought those pieces were playing with, that they understood something about neuroscience in the mind, that the way you took in something visually played with the way that your mind tracks memory. And I thought, I mean, I really, it, it sounds like I'm being kind of a techie person about it, but I thought there was something very real in the way that you see something visually and it has this inner effect on you. And so I thought, well, I can experiment with that and see if it works on me. So is it spirituality? I think it's mysterious. I think there's something inner um, and powerful in the way our mind works. The intuition is I just really pay attention to myself. I test a lot of these things out on me. I use my sensibility to it. Um, I've, uh, I think I'll get to the point in my work where I'm using other people's data and getting to know them, and then their data is part of an algorithm that they can then play back to themselves. I, I don't see this always being about me, but right now I'm my best test subject. Yes? Um, I recently heard something on, I think it was NPR, and it was um, just this idea that you can't manage what you don't measure. Hmm. I don't know who said it, um, but but I don't do any of this um, at all that I can think of. Um, but that little phrase just stuck with me, and when I see you and what you're doing here, it really makes me think of that and and how powerful that would be. And so I just I, it's not really a question as much as when I think of that little phrase, and when then when I think of this, and when I think of that I'm not doing. Um, there's potential. Yeah, yeah. The, the comment was you can't, that you heard on NPR, that you can't manage what you don't measure. Is that right? Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that. I worked at Hewlett Packard for 15 years, and that was one of the mantras, is that if you, you can't manage what you don't measure. And so a lot of high tech and software companies are, in, you know, incredibly diligent about measuring. And some of the things are amazing how small they are. We used to have a staff meeting, and nothing was ever said, but um, there was a mark placed on the whiteboard for the people that walked in late. And <laughs> it was nothing said. It was one of those, it was such a simple act. And you started watching over time, people stopped showing up late. It was just because it got measured. And so the, even, even the idea of steps and sleep, and you watch your weight, or you, the things that you start tracking, you know, people have asked me, do I sleep better? I... Um, it's, it's changed a, a fraction. It's not like, gee, I think I'm going to sleep better tonight. Um, but you do start to understand what affects it. And so, tracking. The thing I also found, I've, I've talked to MFA students at CalArts, so you're sitting there with a lot of, you know, in their 20s, and I don't get any questioning. You know, they just look and just like, absolutely. It's taken as just a given. It's, it's almost like I'm putting words around something that they already know. And they don't think of it as measuring, but it's sort of this idea of self-surveillance is, um, it's not just natural, it's just, it's going to be commonplace, because it kind of comes back to this sense of who are you, identity, connectedness, that you keep track of yourself. <laughs>